Good evening, everybody. Thank you so much for joining in our webinar series. This is the fourth. Uh, our objective is to basically speak a lot about no code and how it is changing the landscape across the world, you know, in various, you know, use cases, processes. Today, we have two guest speakers with us. Um, I'd like to quickly like to introduce them before I introduce myself. Uh, we have Amit Agarwal. Uh, good evening, Amit. Uh, Amit heads IT at uh, the British Council, uh, who heads IT for infrastructure and service management. Uh, thank you for joining, Amit. Uh, we're happy to have you on the call today. Welcome. Thank you, everyone. And uh, thank you, Joseph and Ram, for extending the invite. Thanks a lot. Uh, we also have with us Mr. Anand Jha. Uh, Anand Jha is a veteran, I must say, in the industry. Uh, he comes with, uh, he brings with him about 30 years of experience. He's worked with Bharti Etl, uh, Reliance, and in his last stint was with uh, IBM Kindrel, uh, where he was the associate director of service management. Uh, you know, uh, great minds around uh, service management and how the world around service management is evolving around today. Uh, my name is Joseph. I had sales at Sports Technologies. We've met before. And then uh, we also have uh, our founder CEO from Sports Technologies, C. Ramakrishna Reddy. Uh, good evening, Ram, and welcome to the webinar session. Uh, good evening, everybody. Thanks, Joseph. Anand, sir, uh, my apologies. Thank you so much for uh, joining us uh, in the webinar series, for accepting our invite. And uh, we look forward to having a very meaningful conversation. Thank you. It's a privilege to be here. Thank you, Joseph. Thank you. Thank you. So to get started, you know, service management is uh, uh, a topic that uh, a lot of people would really like to talk about. And then when I was having a chat with uh, Anand sir in the morning, uh, you know, he, uh, he 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 did give me a very beautiful insight, uh, you know, telling me that uh, when you talk about service management, it's predominantly around IT service management. Uh, <clears throat> But the landscape is, you know, largely changing today, where service management is uh, is is something that is uh, being perceived or used uh, very aggressively in multiple uh, industries as well. Uh, so, you know, quickly looking at uh, you know the emergence of uh, service management, uh, what would be some of the co common challenges that we see uh, in service management? You know, if if you could, uh, you know, quickly help us with what you have seen. Uh, in your experience, uh, you know, especially with industries outside the IT segment. Anand, sir, if you would like to start. Yeah, uh, thanks, sir. I think uh, I, uh, you have rightly said that uh, service management is perceived as IT service management. And uh, the customer service, so-called customer service, uh, were not given that much of importance. And the entire customer service management were uh, dealt with a manual process, sideways process. Okay, the product was perceived as a prime importance. Service were given the second importance. Uh, what uh, the team is trying to bring that the service management aspect is a customer service. Okay, how we are going to handle the incident, problem, change. Okay, related to the customers interaction okay be it's uh, installation of any consumer or goods or uh, say uh, refrigerator ac etc so in the day to day life in the day to day activity we interact on the various uh, uh, what do you call the so various service providers and there is is a very much need that how we can have a service management function okay or the tools available to the industry, okay, which are not available. And uh, IT service management is perceived as a high tech, where the, our job is to transition this so-called high tech customer service operation to the business people, okay. So the no code uh, process, okay, identifying the process, changing the process, and easily adopting to the need of a business, where this is going to play a major role. So I think Absolutely. the no code, no code Absolutely. will going to be no code uh, platform will going to bring a more customer centric approach and delight a customer if you able to provide the service to the client uh, the, the the way they need. Thank you so much. Sir. So those were great points, and you know we would really love to hear a little more in terms of how no code will come as we come uh, 
uh, across to the next questions. Um, you know, Amit, you know, uh, what would you like to add? I, I know that you've been part of the IT ecosystem, but in your experience, how do you see, uh, you know, what are the common challenges that you see outside of IT, especially when it comes to service management? I mean, I guess you are muted, as I can see. Sorry. Uh, yeah. So yeah, so the most important, uh, I think, challenge which I can see, which is on top of my head right now, is actually delivering that value. When we talk about very basic definition of IT service management, it is co-creation of value, co-creation of value, and then delivery of value. But we are IT service management is really not able to deliver value because a lot of automations that should have been in place, they are not there. A lot of uh, time is right now taken into by the tool set guys by, by service management team that to how do we build that process how do we make sure that are, are there apart from many other challenges like uh, what uh, anand was talking about in terms of uh, uh, going beyond it and i think going beyond it i would really uh, look at that we really need to talk in the language which the the business wants so if we talk about incident people will not understand if we talk right. about problem people will not understand but if we talk about that for example if we talk about procurement so we say that okay if there is any issue in purchase order if we talk to hr if we say that okay if there is a complaint from an employee so we have to change our language actually in terms of uh, how do we uh, how do we put across service management because it is going into enterprise service management it is no longer it service management if you look at any tool in the market obviously this is a sports uh, webinar but if you look at any tool in the market they are going beyond it but the the issue that i see is that everybody is still selling incident and problem and i think that is the biggest challenge that i see in terms of ending service management yeah so it's more about aligning the language uh, in line with the industry that you're speaking about, identify what what do they really call their challenges as, and then you know try to uh, try to relate with those problems when we talk about service management for them. Right? Uh, thank you so much. Great points, uh, Ram. Now that you've been you know uh, talking to a lot of customers outside of IT, you know multiple industries. What are your you know inputs? What are some of the challenges that you have seen that a lot of these customers bring to us today? I mean, uh, the challenges uh, are multifold, uh, you know, uh, thanks to Anand and Amit uh, have already covered a few of them, uh, you know, all the way from uh, 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 customer uh, raising, um, whether it is a complaint, an issue or, um, or, or any, any problem that you could have, uh, uh, and then uh, auto assigning it uh, to uh, to an agent or to system itself uh, where the system takes over and and then fix it automatically uh, uh, you know there are more and more tools that are coming in where uh, the moment a ticket is raised uh, uh, most of the diagnostic needs to happen automatically rather than a manual intervention the other challenge is that people uh, are people itself because you know uh, the ever changing landscape of how service is done. Uh, the SOPs, the standard operating procedures keeps changing very dynamically. There are new tools coming in between, there are new hardware's coming in, new infrastructures coming in now, and then um, uh, new processes coming in. You know, just keeping up with them is a big challenge for uh, for these professionals, whether it is in the IT service um, or whether it's the normal service, uh, you know, uh, product service, which is uh, manufacturing or other aspects of it, right? Uh, the people itself uh, who has to keep track of, um, you know, the the ever-changing operating procedures um, and uh, also uh, the resolution, the, the, nowadays the resolution time has to be much quicker. Uh, so so keeping in mind all of these, uh, these aspects, uh, uh, remembering them, uh, knowing what to do next, um, you know, is itself a huge challenge. Even now is a huge challenge, primarily because the pace things change uh, they don't change um, you know it, you know prior to this it used to take six months to 
to bring small change now you know a new hardware comes in you know um, that needs, that's installed and you know you you're expected to know everything about the hardware uh, you know go change this command uh, now you know in the it service itself a router gets changed and router new configuration uh, could just mess it up like you know we have load balancers in the it side where you know can dynamically uh, I mean, can, you know, one small configuration just can mess up a lot of stuff, right? Um, you know, learning them, uh, knowing them, you know, and now we depend too much on knowledge bases and stuff like that. So how do we really um, ensure that people don't have to remember anything and how does systems uh, and tools uh, can help them uh, to get to the right uh, uh, solution uh, and also the right step in the standard operating procedure itself is a big challenge. And that's an area where uh, whether it is ITSM or whether it is uh, uh, the normal traditional service management, you know, has to be looked and, and, and taken care of. Thank you. Thank you so much. Some great points. Um, you know, as a consumer myself, right, uh, you know, moving away from IT service management, when I, uh, you know, when I look at when I when I buy a product today, right, and I, I'm sure I resonate with many other people who you know are with what i'm going to say is that when i buy a product you know i i definitely am worried about you know how the service is going to be right uh i i think one of the things that you really mentioned was about pace right we really live in a very very fast world and uh you know uh i will not put up with my internet being down for an hour right it's a no-no for me today because it has deep uh, business impact right uh, i'm sure a housewife also will not put up with a washing machine being down for a day right uh, you know uh, it, because it, it it affects her work because she she's working elsewhere uh, you know she has a time when she has to wash clothes or he or she has a time and they have to wash clothes and then if it's down it's down you know it's it's not acceptable so i think the uh, the expectation from the consumers is also changing largely uh, while I just spoke about household, there could be a large format machinery, medical equipments, uh, you know, where the outcomes of using those uh, equipments could have a larger impact and a downtime beyond a couple of hours is absolutely not acceptable today because it impacts, you know, somebody's life, it impacts somebody's business. So I think those are some of the, you know, key challenges that, you know, the industry faces today, uh, you know, moving out, you know, predominantly from an ITSM to uh, any other industry today. And I think a lot of industries are opening up uh, to being focused more on services, right? It's not just about selling the product. It's also about how you service that product, right? Uh, I would, like I was mentioning in the morning, when we talk about customer acquisition, right? Uh, customer acquisition cost, how much do you invest in? Uh, you know, bringing a customer on board. I think customer retention cost is also something that is uh, actively being looked upon, right? Because if your CAC is really high, you better have that customer for a very, very long time so that, you know, you, you basically uh, generating profitable business out of the, those customers. Uh, so great points. Thank you so much for, uh, you know, bringing those, those points in. Now, while we see a sea of change that's happening today, uh, what do you think holds in the future of service management? Right. Uh, I'll, I'll direct this question first to you, Ram. Uh, you are somebody who lived outside of India, and I'm sure you've experienced how service has been in other parts of the world. Where do you think uh, we are today in in comparison, and what are, what are your thoughts about how the future of service management should be? Um, I mean, it's a good question. Uh, it's. I mean, first, uh, I think. The peop the biggest thing that I talked about is uh, patience. Um, you know, people expect things to be resolved now, uh, not for five days, not four days. Now, an example uh, that we talk about is, let's say, uh, there is a breakdown breakdown of your vehicle. People expect it to be fixed in forty minutes, and that's what we do with Maruti. Maruti commits to a service where you have to get uh, the issue resolved, uh, or at least you should reach the customer in 40 minutes, and then the issue should be resolved uh, in an hour and a half or two, um, so that you could start going in your journey, right? Uh, so that the the pace itself uh, is is what is very important, um, is what is changing. The second thing is uh, uh, people want everything to be automated, all the way from the customer raising the ticket, 
uh, the uh, you know they don't mm -hmm. want any manual intervention because things could go wrong uh, all the way from uh, you know let's say if you're in a car you know you don't want to call you just want to press a button and then the ticket lands and it gets allocated people are coming you know who's coming and what time they're reaching and you can monitor them at the same time this is from a customer standpoint so they look at for an integrated customer service uh, all the way from ticket raising to monitoring to figuring out uh, when when the customer is going to uh, uh, you know when when the, when the when the agent is going to come and fix your issue that is number one where there's a manual intervention they also want things to be uh, diagnosed like like look at these days there are a lot of self diagnostic tools within the routers built in where um, you know the router self fixes it um, uh, uh, in fact uh, uh, you know we do this in um, um, in in our uh, SaaS platforms where the load increases all of a sudden, and then uh, the the servers are automatically diagnosing the load, and then automatically increase the the CPU or or the RAM uh, so that there is no impact to the customer. So so there is this called uh, you know what in the first incident reactive customer service where the duration is being compressed that is reactive. In the proactive, so there is more and more uh, that's been invested in proactive customer services. Even before the customer raises the ticket, the system knows that there's something going wrong and it takes uh, corrective actions. This is the second part. And the third part is an integrated management, right? You know, you need to let customer know there's an, sometimes, you know, customer is not aware there's an incident um, and uh, the system automatically fixes it, but the customer still needs to know that there is an incident because it's part of, uh, um, you know, a lot of these compliances uh, forces you to let the customer know there is, could be a potential incident. So keeping all of that in track, whether the customer, uh, the system itself uh, is another uh, uh, place where a lot of uh, emerging, uh, I mean, this is what's much emerging in, in, in the, the service, uh, service management segment. Thanks. Thanks, Ron. Thanks. Uh, Amit, uh, you know, but you, I'm sure you know you since you've been with the organization for the longest time, and since you've been, you know, uh, managing services management as a key portfolio. Uh, how do you think this has evolved over time, and where do you think is the future? What do you think can get uh, better? I'm sure you would have used multiple tools, uh, you know, through your journey. Uh, I'm sure you would have seen and met different kinds of. Uh, expectations that came in from customers in house or, or, or outside, right? So, where do you think we are, and where do you think uh, you, you know uh, service management is headed into the future? Uh, definitely, uh, thank you, Joseph. Uh, so, when I look at uh, where we are right now, I think we have improved a lot in terms of service management. Um, maturity has come in a lot in British Council in terms of understanding why service management is important. But now, I think the time has come in to go to the next step. Uh, maybe enterprise service management is one area, but I will give you a very small use case. I think that is where we are currently dwelling upon, which is knowledge management. Uh, what is happening is that people are putting in KB articles. We can tag them. They can search, use it. But now what we are looking at is that if suppose on a ticket, there is a uh, issue and on you some can the system automatically pick it, submit it as a KB article? Can the knowledge manager say that, okay, yeah, this goes to this person, please review it. Can this be published for the next usage? So I think that's where we, we are looking to uh, go into that journey wherein we can automatically pick up knowledge from the already tickets assigned. We can automatically pick up, uh, for example, uh, I can take one more example. Maybe when we are talking about capacity management, so when we are looking at the trends of network utilization, when we are looking at uh, Azure uh, you, uh, tenant utilizations, so a lot of trends are there. But how do we know that, okay, whether we need to act upon this particular area to reduce or improve auto scaling is there. But yeah, auto scaling works at times. But I think we need to, as a human also, we need to take those decisions in order to uh, be, make our uh, infrastructure more uh, agile and more uh, like cost effective uh, also so i think these are i think two use cases wherein i am currently dwelling upon in terms of how service management toolset can bring in maybe 
machine learning and artificial intelligence into intelligence. the system to yeah, base, based based on the data that is already available okay so uh, to make sure those knowledge articles are automatically created for the desk because again it will lead to less uh, reduction in the time of a ticket resolution like uh, ram and you were telling about that okay we want it in 40 minutes so that how is it possible when the knowledge is uh, passed on to the next people in the line so and same way with the capacity management so that's i think where i would see, want to see service management uh, in the next uh, uh, not few years but few months actually five great. to six months great points anand sir you you have spent a lot of time in the you know telecom sector uh, as i see and it is one industry that uh, you know uh, uh, it keeps service as a huge aspect right it's not just you know so what were your experiences and uh, you know where do you think there are there needs to be improvements what do you think should be the future of you know uh, service man so you're on mute uh, if if you if you're trying to speak maybe you'll have to unmute yeah yeah thank you yeah so let me chat uh, ram has uh, taken three points okay mm -hmm. uh, one is a resolution second is a automated process and third is a i think he briefly touched about the keeping the customer informed the biggest challenge for all of us okay how to keep the customer informed about the all the progress is happening okay uh, if engine repair will take say 4 hour it will take 4 hour okay Uh, you can't put a extra effort to repair engine in half an hour because that won't be a cost effective. Okay, so customer is not looking for that sort of thing. What customer is looking for to keep them informed? What is happening? What is the progress is happening? Okay, if uh, my complaint has been acknowledged, okay, it has been responded, and somebody has done the analysis and communicated back to me that it's okay. So and so is the problem. and the, the, this is a resolution it will take x y z hours okay and in x hours if there is a longer duration he can keep informing that a b c process has happened because customer experience is not about just resolution is is about how we are keeping the customer engaged okay how we are keeping the customer informed about the progress that they are more interested okay so that is the aspect i think we should cover and a real life example where i think uh, this service management will come into the play that a real life example that i am porting my one of my uh, what do you call uh, medi claim from uh, hdfc corporate to individual okay mm -hmm. and the timeline has been more than 20 days okay because they have to take a separate uh, uh, underwriter approval etc all those things now what is happening in between uh, I, there were lull period i was not doing what is happening whether it in, it is it is being informed me or not whether it is going to be approved or not so such service management okay now service management will going to enhance the customer experience and there i think we should have a system where we keep informing customer at each step that what is happening that is one part and there could be two part one is inside confidential part with within the company another part with the customer and that that power i think we are going to give to the business people so those are the things i think uh, will help uh, us uh, in uh, uh, improving this uh, what you call service management or we say customer experience if coming to the telecom environment you right uh, then i think uh, rightly said that Uh, if you see the dsl suddenly if the dsl is not working you will get a alert that the there is a down and the ticket has been raised okay and suddenly you will see the system is start working and somebody again you will get the message the system was down so those are the information is helping customer <laughs> that company is proactively working on it and informing you so keeping the so the bottom line is keeping the customer informed through this our our service management platform will definitely going to enhance customer experience and this will open a new uh, what do you call new market for everyone okay 
because right now everybody is thinking that the CRM, which is highly tech, okay, code dependent, uh, what Ram talk about, it taking longer time to do all those things. So CRM will take a next level of evolution when you talk about the CRM, uh, service management. So this is my take on that. Fantastic, sir. Uh, you know, I, I, I'm pitching to say this, I'm sure Ram is also, but a lot of points that you just covered in terms of uh, keeping the customer informed once a service ticket is raised, you know, maybe not the technicalities of, you know, how it's getting fixed, but uh, in terms of, uh, you know, where exactly the uh, request is and who's handling it and how far it has come. Uh, you know, the good news is that you can already do that with effort. Uh, but I really do not want to, you know, dwell, uh, you know, a lot on on that because today we, we're in general speaking about service management. But, uh, you know, I, I definitely like to make the point that you can do that with effort today, uh, which is our no-code platform from uh, schools. And we have a host of customers who basically make use of this feature where, you know, once a service ticket is raised, the engineer is assigned, uh, you know, based on your geolocation, based on availability and then uh, uh, once the activity starts right the customer is informed the oem is informed on what is the activity how long it's going to take so on and so forth so real time updates real time uh, you know uh, real time visibility you know happens on the platform right so yeah. so when when you spoke about future right uh, you know i'm i'm glad to say that you know we've already made inroads there sorry was there a question? Right. Nothing. So, so go ahead. Thank you. Okay. Great. Great. Uh, moving on. Right now, uh, while we look at uh, you know while we look at uh, uh, service management, right? Today, largely we uh, as we keep coming across many customers, we still find uh, that you know a lot of customers still use manual methods, right? And uh, it is the same, you know, in, when we talk to small customers, when we talk to mid-sized customers and also to enterprise customers. Uh, and we also realize that some of these enterprise customers have invested in certain tools, but they still, uh, you know, are maybe comfortable following manual methods uh, or, uh, you know, or, or, or probably are not educated enough about the tools that they are using right so what what would be your take in terms of uh you know why that change is really not happening uh and you know what do you think could be done better to make uh, to ensure that uh you know technology is used much more because we clearly from the points that we've just spoken uh we we've clearly outlined that it definitely is going to you know make a huge impact and a, give a huge benefit to anybody who's you know digitizing or bringing technological advances into service ticketing uh, or service management problem, right? So, uh, you know, what do you think uh, needs to be done to make that switch from uh, a manual method of, uh, you know, uh, capturing information and, you know, providing information to end customers to, uh, you know, uh, to digitizing or bringing in technology? Amit, if you could, you know, you know, help us with your views, would be great. The, the thing that was coming to my mind is uh, COVID taught us a lot, pre-COVID. <laughs> Pre-COVID, we were basically doing a lot of things manually. And uh, because we had to stay indoors, we found out ways that, okay, how do we digitize this? How do we get get maybe a packet of milk at home by just right. sending one something to that person? You can see the amount of digital wallets and digital payments that have increased during the COVID period of time. Uh, but maybe uh, there, there, can, there can't be a COVID for service management. There can't be. So <laughs> what is that? what is that we need? Uh, I think uh, we need uh, we need uh, that vision and we need that uh, commitment from the management and from the ITSM community that okay just to make sure that show that okay this is how it can be done and I think when we talk about a no code platform that is actually what it is doing is that it is bringing in technology closer to the business that is how I see and when we talk about technology going towards the business that means the business can very well do it themselves or with the help of a little bit per uh, a person who understands a little bit of tool and the business. So that sort of uh, capability or skills are only required rather than the current uh, 
levels of coding and all those things which are required which is making the process a little bit slow and the benefits are not realized or they are realized a little bit uh, with a delay i will not say that the benefits are not at all realized they are realized but by the time we we come to a place where those benefits can be seen the market has moved to a different place and then we start catching up onto that particular area so i think the gap always remains there in terms of the expectations of the business and what it can deliver great uh, great great points uh, amit ram what would be your take how do we how do we how do you think we can move uh, you know people from being in a comfort zone of doing things manually to being in a comfort zone using technology it's a it's a uh it's a complicated problem let me put it this way um i think uh, i mean it's not like people did not try using technology i think uh, uh uh i've seen when I mean, this is my personal experience then the biggest challenge number one is people think technology the moment you put technology it is like uh, uh you know reaching nirvana and it solves everything for you which is not right right which is absolutely not true uh, it's a combination of implementing technology you know enforcing it and making sure people follow these steps defined and stuff like that so there is still some um, 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 uh, involvement needed all the way from leadership um, uh, the biggest reason why a lot of people who've tried technology um, you know uh, uh, who tried technology did not really stick with it and they said manual is better because they thought we are just spending money and we're still doing stuff manually they don't see the 80% gain that they get from the leadership standpoint they just think you know prior to this i used to review my things even i'm reviewing today also and uh, and why is it taking time right so the decision makers all of a sudden doesn't see that there is uh, less time but actually the benefit below uh is 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 a lot because then everything is automated digitized and stuff like that there is also a challenge from the down below uh they say they see benefit but then because of the visibility that it gives technology gives people are little averse to uh you know um, even following technology because it can give you visibility it can throw that this ticket is delayed and stuff like that now that also means there is a uh, there's a there's a uh you know negative perception from the employee saying hey we've been monitored and you know everything is being tracked so there is a there is a there is this friction um you know we've seen places where the success came where first uh, mindset change uh, is just putting technology doesn't solve the problem there is still somebody needs to look at this data push people to do it non compliances and stuff like that and unless that happens especially for service management um you need it gives you it shows you know service management is one place where everything is a problem it highlights a problem and it is highlighting a problem or a problem right like somebody like a customer raised a ticket and if it's getting delayed it's highlighting and means it's a bigger problem that that the technology is highlighting it's not um, just highlighting it's escalating escalating so and stuff like that. so which means there's a lot of resistance from the bottom there also um, uh, there should be push now when it escalates the management thinks hey it's still you know i am getting involved why should i uh, get involved i thought the technology is going to solve the problem mm -hmm. so am i if i was getting involved before and if i'm getting involved now is it really worth the money right that's another mindset that i see uh, you know has to change to really move uh, uh, from manual and and then going to uh, you know technology implementations across the across the company right that's the biggest problem um, that i see uh, by technology itself can solve a lot of problems it can optimize at a lower level sometimes at a management level you don't see or perceive the benefit because you are still getting involved great uh, anand sir an uh, thank you thank you so much uh, um, anand sir what would be your thoughts you know you know uh, I, 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 I i have got two three uh, different perspective for this okay uh, the adoption of uh, any new technology is not happening not because they don't want okay because as a technology guy we want to push the technology this is the solution this is a 
if you buy this tool, you will solve your problem. That is the approach taken by most of the, uh, the technology uh, Vendors people. In the market. Yeah, and that's that's why there is uh, there is a very little adoption is there, and everybody try to automate themselves. Okay, by using the in-house capability. The biggest challenge, Ram, this for you as a CEO, is that uh, unless they change the background process, okay, the technology won't help. So what is happening? They even they they imply a technology is not going to solve their problem. The benefit won't occur, and they see that okay, I have used this tool, benefit has not because they have not changed the associated problem. So the biggest challenge for all of us is to create a huge case, okay, where you sell a value proposition that this is the way you serve customer, sell product, okay, refrigerator servicing or car servicing or XYZ servicing. And these are the three things you need to change to bring this benefit, okay, and these are the benefit. So if you conduct some, what do you call, case study, okay, uh, then the value proposition will be much stronger to buy them, okay? They will be willing to uh, buy your solution, buy your technology. Why I am just giving an example, because Mr. Chu, I don't know the, Manoj Chu, who was an uh, external uh, president for Mahindra, uh, Tech Mahindra, and Mahindra Go basically. He said that if you are bringing just technology to them, okay, they won't buy. You have to understand their pain, okay? Where the pain is there, okay? Whether the service structure need to be changed, the way they are, the process are oriented, that need to be changed, or resources need to be trained. What are the underlying uh, factors, okay, which are responsible to bring this benefit to the customer? Unless you address them, okay, as a value proposition, okay? That okay will help you with the process, okay, so that this technology can bring you the benefit. By just putting a technology on front of the old process or the bad process won't give you the result. Because that is the biggest challenge I see. Because whenever I have approached, okay, I have seen that the process itself is not up to the mark. What technology is going to do that? Okay. So this is Got one it. aspect. One aspect. Second aspect is that how they're going to digitize because they are thinking that digitization is just automation of process. Digitization is not automation of process. It's totally different, rewriting a process. So that, we need to sell that way, okay, to bring the value proposition. So that is, there are two aspects, okay, solve the backend problem, bring the value, how the technology is going to bring the value by changing certain changes in the process, that is one aspect. And it's not just we are going to replicate their inefficient process through our technology, right. whereas our technology will enable them to bring efficiency into their backend process. So these are the two aspects I think we need to bring in our story, either through the case study or the value proposition. That will bring adaptability of this service management to the larger scale, other than the IT sphere. Because IT is very small. If it is 20% is IT, but 80% is a normal day-to-day -day operation. So where we, it, it has got a very big potential market. How we're going to present, it's up to us. Absolutely. It's a great points there, sir. So it's not yeah, just I mean, Just to you... add, I mean, I think no, sure. one moment. Just, I, I completely uh, agree, Ananji. I think those are very valuable points because personally, I've, I've, Notice, right? I mean, our platform primarily uh, what we do is, uh, uh, I mean, you know, most of the time what happens is uh, uh, the technology drives and they have, they were rigid before and they say, okay, this is how you have to do. Now that's yes. not understanding their pain. So there was a problem there where the customer said, hey, you know, you're not understanding my pain at all and you're yes. throwing me technology which you solve for somebody else, which is not my problem, right? Yes. That is number one. Then with no code platform for with uh, ours, what we do is we just allow our platforms to do what is customer asking. So, uh, we don't do the analysis whether it is actually solving their problem. 
we are not solving what they actually want we just do what they ask because the platform allows you to do you are absolutely right where you have to invest that time and figure out what are they asking but what do actually they want and then help uh, help that want to be addressed number one uh, and number two is uh, you know after implementing the process the due diligence or the the rhythm or the daily looking up of information giving that information back to the customer pushing them sometimes to use our information to take actions is when i have seen uh, customers getting delighted because they say okay we've implemented technology i thought it will tell me what to do but it's not telling me it is again i have to think all the time right so that part sometimes cannot be automated but somebody has to look at that and actually give that uh, answers to the leadership saying hey you know you have to take these actions if you don't then you know you will have this problems right i think those two are absolutely you know your bang on target that most of the time we miss when we go uh, because our platform does it, can do anything we just do what they ask for not really solving their actual pain point uh, but that's when customer says okay you know we have implemented technology or doing exactly what i'm asking but it still is not solving a problem now yeah. most of the time we see our engineers will say hey we are solving exactly what you are asking for <laughs> then why are you worried about He says, "You're solving what I'm asking for, but it's still not solving my problem, right?" So that disconnect has to be fixed. Fixed. Yeah. yeah so, 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 sorry, just to add. So, it is basically it is not about the technology uh, selling. It is a consultative selling has to be there, where Absolutely. we understand their problem and help them to use the technology in the right way. Because at the end of the day, they will going to ask, "I have bought your technology. It has not given the result." so and that we, we must own the result okay so that's why i'm saying that if it is possible do some case study where we can explain that this is this was the problem this is the way we help and this is the technology has been adopted and we have transfer this uh, what you call power from it to business so those sort of thing i think linkage has to be established to make it fly Great points, great points. So you know, bottom line is old wine in new bottle will still remain sour if it was if it was sour in the older bottle, right? So uh, the bottle's not going to change anything. So you have to change the wine a bit if you know it has to be better. Uh, great, great points coming in there. So you know, I'll take a pause here. Uh, you know, we have a couple of attendees who joined us today, and uh, you know, if there are any questions, uh, you know, we'll be happy to take. I see somebody has raised a hand. Yeah. Um, Shridhar, yeah. Shridhar, uh, is there a question? Uh, you know, we'll be happy to answer. Okay. Looks like Shridhar is not around. Yeah, if if uh, among the attendees, if there are any questions that you would want to, you know, bring forward, you know, uh, you know, we have the experts here. Uh, you know, uh, we, we we will be able to happy. We'll be happy to help you with answers. Oh, cool. Great. So moving on. Uh, uh, Rish, uh, sorry, uh, there is one uh, question in the chat. Yeah. Stream what technology is, be, is being used to streamline the uh, service management? Yeah, I think we will speak a little about that in in our in our next questions, right? So, uh, uh, so uh, we already spoke uh, about. We already. Uh, spoke jo about jo Joseph, can I take a leave? Sorry, I have to be there, sir. Uh, I, th just this one last question, uh, because uh, you know you are somebody who's used no code, so I want some points coming in from you, and and then maybe you can, right? So please bear with me for a few more minutes, right? Okay. You already spoke largely uh, about no code, and you know, uh, for me to ask, have you heard about no code? Will be really preliminary, so you know, I'm excusing myself from there. We already. Uh, you know, there were points that came in from, uh, uh, you know, from Anand sir, as well as, uh, you know, Amit, around, you know, no code. So, sir, uh, you did tell me that you have, you know, used no code in the past. What are your thoughts and how do you think it is going to change the, uh, you know, how do you think it is going to change uh, service management uh, as a whole? Anand sir, if you could answer the question. Yeah, see, I have used this uh, no code, and the biggest flexibility giving it 
in creating a different sort of form okay different type type of workflow as and when needed okay so it has got an umbrella of workflows boxes okay you can assign a task okay on the fly and uh, th this can be done with the uh, by the business team and hence the owners of making a business successful is with business okay and they know their process better Okay. And since they since they are not playing with any IT infrastructure, because we have ensured that the forms are designed in a such a way, data sanity are uh, uh, entity are maintained. Okay, those take those things have been taken care at back end. Okay, so no code is playing very excellent role in empowering the business owner. To change the process, the 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 way they want on the fly, and uh, it can be used to support business exigency anytime. That's going right. to be the way of life. Got it, sir. Got it. Got it. Yeah. Uh, great point, sir. Uh, great points. I mean, uh, you know, what would be your, uh, you know, what, what, did you have a brush with no code? What is your experience? Uh, how um, do you think you want to streamline service management? Yeah. So I think. Uh, I think the industry is looking at that the complete platform is a no code platform. Although the experience that I have with no code is in the catalog, the service request catalog, if we talk about. Uh, so a lot of uh, players have now come in uh, with a uh, widget called the catalog builder, if I can mm -hmm. use that word. So what that really means is that uh, we can use that catalog builder to um, without any technical knowledge we can build basic forms workflows approvals we can impl uh, implement that so those sort of uh, uh, no coding exp exposure i have uh, in terms of me and my team and and that has really done very well in terms of uh, the the timeline to deliver the agility to make sure that we can make uh, changes on the go as per the business requirement uh, and also to make sure that there is always a transparency like we were talking about communications there is always a transparency in terms of where we are what we are doing and how is it shaping up so that sort of uh, exposure we have had but i'm i'm actually looking at uh, uh, in the service management that everything is a no code because right now if you talk about a, a standard change catalog wherein a lot of standard changes are there we do not have something like that so that is where i think i want that uh, uh, maybe the service management team who are managing the processes, they themselves can manage the tool set. Because again, I, I have been always an advocate of the tool cannot dictate the process because processes are processes are set in an organization. If you talk about ITIL, it is a framework. It is not a standard. So what I'm looking at is that the service management processes are made as per the business requirement. That means the organization requirements. And those processes should be implemented on tool rather than tool dictating anything to the processes that, okay, no, this can't be done X way. This can only be done Y way. So that is where I'm looking at. And I think uh, with no code and widgets, uh, these two things would help service management to uh, be more efficient and effective in terms of value delivery. So the agility I, that it brings to, you know, uh, not do it the X just way. Sir, I think Mr. Anand just, might have... Yeah. Just, just, Mr. just I, want to, uh, yeah, I just want to sure. add, okay, if you talked about the uh, uh, when uh, in the previ uh, previous assignment, I was implementing the service now, okay, and okay. it was a very, very lean process, but there was a biggest challenge, I'll tell you, how the no code is going to play. Suppose you want to add one approver, okay, and those approvers are not within your group. You can't add the approver, okay. And it has to create a change request. It will go for a approval, coding, etc., testing everything. It will take seven to eight days. What Ram was talking about. No code will simply allow you to add that person, okay, from the workflow, okay, without changing your entire structure of the process, okay, Absolutely. because something requires a extraordinary approval required from the vice president because there is x costly involved okay and it's a very much possible that vice president can approve now what is going to happen you'll go through the off route okay 
you are losing the entire tra track silo you are going through the either whatsapp or sms but no, if the no code platform is there and the person authorized person service manager he can raise a request just add a drop down it will create a workflow because the workflow is already there and the vp can approve the cost okay so no code is going to play make a life easy okay even for the uh, thing where service now remedy where is a hard coded integral party there so it is evolving it will going to play a major role and make life easy amit that's why i want to add to your point absolutely great point sir so you know i've heard uh, agility i've heard ease of use uh, i've heard uh, diy right uh, typically uh, you know probably a decade ago or even half a decade ago uh, somebody in business would just go to it and say okay look this is what i need right you moving away from there and then saying that uh, you know today business can basically say that oh, this is how i want it and i'm going to create it this way right yeah. so that is like a major shift that that that's basically that that no code is bringing into the uh, into the market uh, ram now that you know you've been you're know, working on this you know on no code and diy for like over a decade what are your experiences how do you think this is going to transform and if you could also share some uh, you know uh, real world scenarios where you help customers uh, that would really be great i mean uh... <clears throat> just to give an idea uh, of some real world scenarios we have a a, a customer in uh, uh, sri lanka john keels uh, they have close to 28 processes uh, uh, on 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 the platform and they did everything on their own they actually have a five people team which keeps developing these processes right wow. the biggest mm -hmm. benefit is uh, they don't come to us and they don't pay extra money for the 28 processes and their business team does all of them on their own and they make changes instantly. Uh, that's number one. The number two benefit is in traditional uh, development, um, uh, like what Mr. Anand was saying, uh, is you have to think through about the process. Now, sometimes you can't spend a lot of time in really streamlining the process 100%. Now, even getting 70% benefit uh, is still a, you know, is, is the benefit. So the best part of these platforms which are coming now is uh, first, it will allow you to automate only 70% and it will not put any restrictions to add 5% every time you think about a new idea. And um, so, so that means your experimentation ability has increased, which was not there before, right? So let's say you say, hey, I want to introduce this. I want to see the benefit. Oh, I'm not getting this benefit. So let me roll back. Right, which which was not there because what happens is I'll tell you in the traditional development, it would take the same amount of time to uh, add a new step and roll back a new step, right? And um, which was not possible before uh, rolling because you might see that the benefit of uh, the process without a new step itself is more compared to a new step, right? Now, all of these agility and experimentation ability comes from these platforms, right? Which is uh, the reason why they love it. Um, countries like India, um, you know, are still evolving to adopt no codes uh, because uh, um, they're still used to having somebody do it. Um, um, but I think, um, uh, you know, whether it is uh, Maruti, whether it is Make My Trip, PhonePay, Rapido, uh, Siemens, Mahindra Finance, they love the platform. Any, if you look at uh, some technology companies like, you know, PhonePay, Make My Trip, uh, Rapido, which are core technology, are also using our platform because they don't have to write code from the beginning. And they just say, hey, you know, there's a no code platform. Let me take it. It'll take three days, four days for me to streamline a process. And if I have to change it, it takes an hour for me to change the process, right? Now, these hour days, you know, is like a dream for a lot of these IT uh, uh, companies because it used to take three months, six months before every small change. Rollback also would take the amount of time, which is no more the reason uh, for not doing something or experimenting something. And that's because you know no code platforms like us give the ability to the customer and the businesses to play around. I use the word play around because that's what exactly no code does. You know, it's a playground, an experiment, and make your process better on a daily basis. 
Yeah, so the names that you just called out, right? Uh, what does not miss my attention is that they are from different industry verticals, right? So, you know, and each of them, I'm, I'm presuming, had different, different kinds of requirements as well, right? So the ability for no code to actually, you know, just get onto the platform and then, uh, you know, configure or build what they like, right? The ease that it gives, uh, I think is definitely something, uh, you know, really, really uh, positive, right? So it is not a pointed solution anymore, right? So somebody does not have to be an industry expert. Uh, and I know that, you know, uh, effort is a technology enabler where you just provide the platform and a customer can come and say, hey, you know, this is my you know business case. This is what my process is. And I really want to, uh, you know, uh, build an application where I can, you know, quickly uh, get running with it. Um, Great, great points, uh, you know, Ram. Uh, uh, Amit, would you like to add, you know, anything further, or, or you know, on how no code can benefit uh, the whole industry, you know, uh, as such, right? Uh, see, I think I've covered some points, but uh, maybe I'll try and uh, rephrase them. Industry is right now talking about AI and ML, and I think that's the area where uh, auto discovery, uh, machine learning, these are the areas where I think. Uh, no code will definitely help apart from uh, the traditional areas where we are looking at how do we make sure that the, the delivery of our, our workflow or a, a new uh, support model on the tool set is much faster as compared to where we are currently. Because a lot of things, if I talk about, they go into the backlog whenever our service management team picks up any new thing that, okay, yeah, this is how it can be done more efficiently. We straight away log a change for the service now team. It sits in their backlog. So what is the use of that? If we identify anything good, we should actually be able to implement it also faster. So I think uh, no code will definitely help us uh, over there. And uh, so these are the two things which I wanted to highlight. AIML, uh, AI, like acceptance of AIML and introduction and maybe some use cases which will help us to uh, understand yet uh, yes that AIML is only not like a chat GPT tool you ask questions and you get answers but wherein you deliver value also to the end user because in the end when we are talking about cost effective uh, delivery of services especially when we talk about uh, uh, service providers uh, who are in the market they are really looking forward to some scenarios where they can reduce cost and improve the delivery quality of the delivery so I think that is where I think uh, I feel uh, no code platform can help uh, in terms of anything. Thank you. Thank you so much, Amit. So to, to the question that had come to us, right, what technology is being used to streamline service management? I think one simple answer is that, you know, today no code can help you to do that because uh, it gives you agility, it gives you ease of use, uh, it helps you to get to the market quickly, it enables you to make changes to, a, to an existing process quickly, it, it enables you to add, remove processes quickly and like, you said, and like Ram, you know, rightly said, you can quickly uh, try something new, come back to ensure that your processes are intact and, you know, organizational uh, goals are met. Uh, as I look at the clock, we overshot our time. And I know that this is a subject that, uh, you know, we possibly could speak for hours. Uh, you know, I'd like to take a minute to thank uh, Amit, thank uh, Ananji for, you know, coming over. Thank you so much. Ram for you know bringing out those great points. But before we sign off, if there are any any further questions, if there are any points that our attendees would like to make, you know uh, the floor is open. Uh, you know you can quickly you know jump in. If there are questions, we'll try and see how we can answer them. I presume there are no more questions. Great. Thank you so much, uh, gentlemen, for, you know, taking time to be on this call. I think it was a great session. Uh, you know, uh, there was a lot of uh, learning. There is a lot of uh, sharing that has, you know, come across from, you know, various, uh, uh, from different industry verticals, from various uh, thought processes. And uh, one thing that, you know, anybody who's on the webinar, the, the key takeaway is that no code is the future. And, uh, you know, somebody really wants to spin up an app. It's all about, you really don't have to be technical there. Uh, all you need to do is just un know your, uh, you know, business workflow, uh, you know, pick up a great tool like Effort, uh, go forward, uh, create the app, publish it and get going. Any closing comments, if you'd like to make, uh, you know, we can. Otherwise, I think uh, we will be good with this.
thanks uh, joseph joseph thanks uh, amit ji uh, nice uh, for you to join our uh, webinar same here thank you same here thank you thank you everyone thank you thank you, joseph. Thank you. Thank you ram thank, thank you, you anand thank you bye 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 everyone who's on the webinar bye thank you. Thank you. bye, -bye.